Is everybody having a good time? Yeah! Woo! Oh yeah, I want to hear it because uh, I, um, I heard it in a room a little earlier and I want to hear it again in this room. So I want everybody to say bonsai, okay? One, two, three. Bonsai! Woo! <laughs> Hi guys. Hi, right, Michael Dobson. Hello, hello, hello. Um, okay, so this is, um, yeah, exactly. Getting into the business, um, how to work um, your way into the business, become a voice actor. So any questions that you have, um, I'll be glad to answer them as we kind of go along. So feel free, like if something comes to mind as I'm talking and going, oh, oh, oh I got a question. Just sh shut me up, man, and ask the question and I'll ask it for you. Um, so I, everybody that's here is, has interests in, uh, in, in working in the voiceover industry, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, coming around to the front part now. I'm gonna sit over here. Because I'm probably gonna come out and talk to you guys. Um, what's that? Cool story, look at that. Cool story, Rodin. Unlimited, apparently. Um, <laughs> but I have this one. <laughs> oh, he has that one. Oh, look, he's got one that's cordless. Hey, hey. Oh, no, Scott on my thing. My, oh, pardon. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, yeah, it's alright. I'm okay with the rules. <laughs> I'll go there, I'll take it for you in a sec, sure. Um, you know, really, at the end of the day, the biggest thing is, is, is that personality thing. It's just as far as being the kind of person that, that just loves to have fun and very outgoing. That's, that's, that's really an important part of the equation. Um, the acting part, you really can't teach people to act. Either they kind of have it or they don't have it, but you need to learn all the, the fundamentals for sure. You know, the, the thing like I think I was saying earlier today um, about having a theater background. A theater background is, is probably the best, most solid background you could have as an actor to draw from because it's where you really, you know, get your chops busted. <laughs> you gotta learn all that dialogue. You know, you can sink or swim when you go out onto stage. It's, you know, there's all those nerves and nails. And it really, it really uh, hones your skills as an actor. But the type of, the style of acting that you would use on stage is no different than what you would do behind the microphone. And one of the things that, people kind of make a mistake of when they get behind a mic is that um, they feel that you kind of sort of hide behind that microphone as opposed to using the microphone as if it were the camera. So, like get right into it, make all those facial expressions, those gestures, all the things that you would do if you're on stage and actually performing that character. You want to be doing that. And I tell you, like when you work, especially when you're doing um, prelay, which is when you lay the voice down first and then they animate to it later, the, um, the first episode that you do, the pilot episode that you do, it's an all-day affair and they bring in camera crews and the guys are sitting on the floor and they're like, they're shooting you like from the bottom, like looking up at you and everything. And they're recording all your gestures and everything because they're going to use that. All your facial expressions, everything that you do, they're going to record all that, look at it later and in, uh, integrate that into the character. So all the stuff that you're doing is going to get used and it's all, all going to be part of the character that everybody sees as an animated character on, on, in the show. Yeah. Do you ever find that it's more difficult to portray, say, an animated character than, like, something Shakespearean? Okay, so I'm going to grab that now. I think I have to do the, yeah, swap mic thing again. Oh, oh, he's like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I say, is he good? I say, big round of applause for him. Yeah, yeah. 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 I say, dashing girl. Yes, is this thing on? your lovely assistant, <laughs> But he is lovely. Okay, here we go. Do you ever find it more difficult to do an animated character than, say, a Shakespearean character? I mean, whereas they're based in reality, a lot of animated characters, or any animated character, is typically more fanciful, a lot more extreme. Is it more difficult? Do you have to use more method acting? What, what do you do? Yeah, that's an interesting question, because I never really kind of thought of it that way. But when you think about it, um, a lot of anime is very classically based, like in its storytelling, the, the types of stories that are, um, that are used and the types of characters that you see in, in a lot of the shows. And it's interesting that you should bring it up, actually, because um, now that I think about it, the approach to those characters a lot of the time are more leaning towards, uh, you know, classically trained acting with regard to Shakespearean actors. Um, some, some of the characters are kind of larger than life and very sort of Machiavellian type villains and things like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and they have these great, wonderful monologues and stuff like this, where, you know, it really draws the audience in. So that would, that would be, yeah, I would say that. That's why, again, I think stage is so helpful because, all the, because you have less to work with when you're working as a voice actor. Because um, a lot of people, you know, you forget that you don't have wardrobe and you don't have set deck and you don't have makeup and all these wonderful other things like to pull you into character 
you don't have that. You're showing up in like shorts and a t-shirt, and <laughs> you know you might be playing like this this incredibly huge, massive like uh, vampire type character who's uh, you know like, yeah like like this dude over here, and I mean you you need to be able to picture yourself in this big gothic castle, and you need to be able to picture what the you know where where is everybody in relation to you, where, where, where's your character, where is everybody else, what's going on in the room? And then all the other things that the character's doing too, like, you know, when you, there's all these reactions that aren't on the page, but like when you're walking over and you're picking up things and walking with it, so if you're carrying something heavy, you gotta like put that strain in your voice as you're, as you're walking towards the other person, or if you're carrying a large weapon, or if you're in battle mode, you gotta go like, and all that kind of stuff, like, you gotta bring all that to life behind the microphone. So, the best way, when you're approaching these characters, when you when you talk about voice acting, probably probably really I do work as a voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, voice acting probably just the title itself is a little misleading because it's not about creating voices; it's about creating characters, and it's about picturing who these people are, what they look like, um, what their body language is. Are they tall? Are they slim? Are they huge? Do they have a lot of weight to carry around? Are they jowly? Um, all these things are various signals to you as the actor for various cues on how this person is going to sound. Where do they carry? You know, where, where, do they, where does their energy sit? So when you look at it, you know, probably one of the best examples I think of is, is, you know, if you're downtown and you see an event go down and you see all the people, but you're not really kind of hearing everything that's going on, but, it, but it's like an interesting deal going on. And you're looking at it and you see this thing going down and you think, what's that? So you take it all in, it's an interesting story to tell everybody else later, right? So you meet your friends later on and you go, you wouldn't believe what I saw downtown today, I saw this social. And then all of a sudden you just go into the storytelling and you're doing the voices for all these different people. And all these voices just coming out of you, just from the visual cues. Like you're, you're picturing in your mind what these people would sound like. And you're coming up with these accents and you're doing this stuff and you do this whole thing and everybody's just standing going, wow. And, and they love the way you tell stories, right? They love it, like at parties and stuff when you tell jokes and then because you get into character and you just do it. But you don't rehearse that stuff. You didn't like sit there in your car or walk at home or anything and go, okay, so um, the voice for the tall lady is, um, okay, no, that's not it. You don't think about it, it just comes, right? And it's, it's exactly the same process with voice acting. It's exactly the same thing. You take your visual cues and you work instinctively from there. Probably like one of the worst things that can happen when, um, I'm really trying to condense everything down because I, I, I used to teach at Vancouver Film School and I used to teach a 12 week, four hour um, each block um, course there. I'm trying to condense all that down into like this 40 minutes that we've got right now. I'm trying to like, think of all the important little things that I can kind of tell you guys. But, um, um, what was I going? Somebody, what did I just say? Like, I, I lost, sorry? We're talking about the voices. Yeah, talking about people. Pardon? No. Practicing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's got it's, all, it's got to do with visual cues, looking looking to see what the, what the people look like, where the, where they call, hold their energy. All those things are reference points for you, and it's um, like I was saying before, it's it's not about voices; it is about characters. It's creating full, living, um, you know, fully sold, thinking, breathing, living individuals. That's what you want to be doing. That's where you want to come from.